Hey guys. Hey guys. We're back with another Walking Dead review, this time reviewing Fear the Walking Dead, the mid-season finale of Season 2, titled Shiva. If you haven't seen it yet and you want to avoid any spoilers, skip this video and come back later because everything we say from this point forward is going to be a spoiler. Ever since Fear the Walking Dead began, people have had a variety of complaints about it, about that it was going too slow, it was too character driven, and there wasn't enough plot. One thing that I don't think you've ever been able to complain about is lazy writing. Until, Until now. now. Yeah. This, this was a really lazy couple of episodes as we capped off the mid-season. It felt very much like the farm. It felt very derivative of season two of The Walking Dead. And that continued in this episode with the, the house burning down, the walkers coming through the gate, and our group having to leave. It was totally the season finale of season two. Yeah. And let's talk about Daniel. Because... We've had zero indication that he's had any sort of psychological issue until this episode. Like, there was nothing leading up to it. There was no sign. I mean, obviously he's talked about the people he's killed and that he's got this horrific past. Um, but he's never had any issues. And then suddenly in this, ep this episode, he's hallucinating yeah. and basically commits suicide without making sure that his daughter was safe. Yeah. Which is not Daniel. Like, yeah. it doesn't make any sense. Even if, if he had PTSD, we should have at least started to see symptoms this whole time. His wife helped him with that. He was able to, you know, confess his sins to her. But ever since he left, or, you know, ever since the, the wife passed, he should have had this very steady downhill decline. And he hasn't. It was, he was completely fine, and then he snapped and was hallucinating and seeing people. Yeah, it was so abrupt. It was yeah. very jarring. It was just like, oh, well, we we, we look, just give them hallucinations. Yeah, like, like it was so jarring that at first I was like, oh my god, Celia's drugging them all. Yeah, like even if we had just gotten some kind of indication that Daniel was mentally unstable. Yeah, we we could go. Oh, okay, well there there was a clue, you know, back in episode three that 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 could happen. But no, there was absolutely nothing. So it came completely out of the blue, and you can just chalk that up to lazy writing. Yeah, it's they didn't have a storyline, so they created one. Yeah, like last minute without. And having any forethought to it whatsoever. And the, just the last few episodes of Fear the Walking Dead, it's it's really starting to lose me. Like, I'm not excited for it to come back. Yeah, me either. One stylistic thing I want to mention is the shaky cam. Oh my god. The gosh. shaky cam was super obnoxious yeah. in this episode. It was bad. I don't get motion sick, but even I had to look away a couple of times because it was starting to get to me. So Madison traps Celia in with the walkers, and uh, then Daniel goes into the cage and sets the whole thing on fire. And we didn't see Celia there. We didn't see Walker Celia. We didn't see the walkers munching on her. So I got to assume that she did escape because we did not see her death. Yes. And anytime you do not see a villain's death, they aren't dead. Yep. <laughs> and Celia as a villain is kind of interesting it's one of the the few things this episode had going for it, is she is an interesting villain because she's not really a villain she just has this mindset and just if you disagree with her she will take you out <laughs> <laughs> so i mean like she she's a different kind of villain so it'll be interesting to see her come back because you know she's not dead and these people just killed her entire family, the the walkers that were in the yeah. the the, um, the cage, the, yeah, the cage. Um, so I imagine she hunts them down, starts tracking them or something, because this is not something she's gonna let go. No. I will say that I did pretty much like how the episode concluded with the group pretty fragmented. We have. Chris and uh, his father Travis off on their own because Chris has gone completely off the reservation and Travis knows that he can't bring him back because he's a danger yeah. to himself and others, but he can't leave him because he's his son. So I, I, I totally buy into that. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm sold. That on... story was good. Yeah. Yeah, that whole story, that was good. I enjoyed that story. Um, Nikki, he's off on his own because... You know, because humans suck and they destroy, and he's not entirely wrong in that. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, we really kind of do suck. Yeah. And, you know, Madison and Ophelia and 
Alicia and Strand, they're on their way back to the boat, if it's even still there. Yeah, which we have no idea if it is. Yeah. I highly doubt yeah, it is. Yeah, it's not going to be there. Yeah, no. That would be too easy. So where each little micro group has ended up, I think that's pretty cool. Um, if anything, that's what will get me to come back for the second half of the season, is to see how they get everybody back together. Yeah. And like, a lot of the subplots in this episode were pretty good. Like I was saying before, Travis and Chris, their story's interesting. Um, they did a good job on that. I mean, that totally makes sense. That's plausible. Nikki makes sense. Um, it was a little hard to grasp it at first, but then Strand makes a comment about how he was an addict and he's just addicted to a different type of thing right now. And that's like this... Um, you know, uh, Celia and her philosophy. Um, so he kind of makes sense, and his story's interesting. It, it's really interesting that he's not afraid of the walkers, because he, he knows he's not going to die that way. Like, it's, Which, yeah, like, I that's really crazy. hope he gets eaten by walkers. Yeah, I, I kind of, <laughs> I'm, I'm worried about him, because I think he is going to get eaten by walkers, and he's one of my favorite characters, so. I, I love tragic irony, and The Walking <laughs> Dead excels at tragic irony. So yeah. I gotta imagine at some point Nikki is gonna be eaten by walkers because he knows he's not gonna be eaten by yeah. walkers. So Fear the Walking Dead comes back in August and we will continue reviewing it. Um, I, I will say though, as of right now, I'm not overly excited for the return. Yeah, like I, I'm not sad that it's not gonna be on next week. Not even a little bit. <laughs> Okay, we would love to know what you thought of the mid-season finale of Fear of the Walking Dead. Let us know it down in the comments. Also, if we forgot to mention something that you caught in the episode or that we missed or whatever, we would love to hear about it, so let us know. Also, if you enjoyed this review, and we really hope you did, even though we basically crapped on the entire episode, if you enjoyed it, let us know by dropping a like on it and subscribe for more reviews. And thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.